Virtual Racing School was developed to provide support to the next generation of sim racers. No matter if you're a rookie or veteran or what car or track you'll be racing, our goal is to provide training every step of the way. We found that iRacing can be quite difficult without proper training. There needed to be a way to prepare for on-track racing. With VRS, you can literally learn from the best sim racers in the world, including four-time NASCAR iRacing world champion Raul Fala. And Raul Fala is a four-time champion of the NASCAR Pekin of Race iRacing series. Three-time iRacing Grand Prix world champion Martin Cronke. Martin Cronke becomes a three-time world champion. Rallycross world champion Mitchell de Jong. Mitchell de Jong is now champion for the iRacing Rallycross World Championship Series. And many other top sim racers. Data packs include everything you need to start learning. Our world championship coaches create the data packs by setting a hot lap or a series of fast laps for you to compare, analyze, and replicate. Data packs also include a tutorial where the coach points out techniques they use to hit the fast lap. This gives you access to the latest driving techniques and setups before you even hit the track. Sign up for a free account and download the VRS telemetry logger. With this application running seamlessly in the background, your laps automatically start syncing to the VRS website. From there, you can analyze and compare two laps of your choice, whether it's your data, the coaches, or your teammates. VRS will automatically target improvement opportunities so you can get up to speed even faster. VRS also makes it easy for you to request and schedule one-on-one -on -one or group coaching sessions. These sessions can range from 30 to 90 minutes and you can select the car, track and setup combination of your choice. Visit virtualracingschool.com today to sign up and get started. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Apex Racing TV for the first round of season two of the Apex Racing League GT Trophy. It's here at the Daytona International Speedway in the United States, and we've got a great race here coming to you on the road course, 3.5 mile venue. I'm Andrew Woodhouse, and I'm joined by Andrew Thompson, and the honorary Andrew in the production booth is Dennis Branch. And um, Andrew, well, it's it's going to be hot here in Florida. It's going to be a technical challenge. And also you've got those big long straights and the banking where you can do some slipstreaming too. Yeah, definitely. Really looking forward to it. So obviously the first season of only having pros in the GT Trophy. So that's a new, new, uh, slight little difference between the normal GT Trophies that we have. So this is obviously the third season we've had of the GT Trophies. 2.2 KI rating to obviously qualify for the for the pro status in this in this race, and uh, we've currently got nine rounds. But looking at the drivers, Andy, we've uh, we've got a lot of returning drivers from the previous season. 28 of the drivers um, from the previous season have uh, come and joined us on uh, the pro season. 10 out of the top 15 are returning. Uh, and we've got new uh, six newcomer drivers to the series, so nice to see them uh, on the track. But yeah, really looking forward to this race. A good opening round for the series. So it's it's a bit technical as well. You've got the the inside part of the track, uh, and then the outside part of the track, which is uh, very fast. So I'd imagine a lot of these pro drivers will be using very little wing, which will uh, obviously make it interesting on the inboard side of the the track there, Andrew. 
circuit sets up very differently to quite a lot of the, the ones on the calendar in that you know the main components here are traction and top speed there aren't many corners where you're going to need the downforce not like say a spa francorchamps or a hungara ring or somewhere like that where you need the rotation you need that kind of grip in the constant radius corners you need to get out of the slow stuff quickly and you need to um, you need good braking stability as well i tell you what andy that, that is a that's a key here especially to turn one it is a notoriously difficult braking area that. yeah definitely i mean i did the 24 hours uh, around here and that was probably the hardest part for myself uh, being to do it relatively times. <laughs> yeah relatively relatively uh, inexperienced i rated going around that at top speed coming into that first corner which is uh, which is quite daunting um, coming into that, but exactly that. These pro drivers probably driven around this uh, this track a thousand times, so got it down to a, down to a T. But yeah, it'd be interesting to see. And uh, slipstreaming is going to be a big factor in this race, certainly around that back thing going into the bus stop and coming out of the bus stop and getting that corner um, nailed down straight away because you know getting that good exit out of that corner it, it is going to be vital to uh, making sure that you do get your fast lap certainly on these qualifying laps where we can see them all out on the track at the same time yeah and you know there's, there's a fine line to tread between getting the slipstream that you need and it being traffic in your way and i think that's what we'll see um the drivers trying to get the balance between that, those two things as we go along in this session. Um, see some names like uh, Brandon Tabone, Kurt Camilleri, um, raced, seen him on the channel a few times, uh, I think a few uh, outings in the World GT Championship, Richard Gafenku, um, many, many races on this channel. You've got uh, Matthias Beer, we saw him in some of the races during the uh, during the first lockdown in 2020, I believe. Oyston Hereford, uh, he's in the ARL Touring Car Championship. And I'm sure there'll be a few more that come to my attention. Uh, oh, Mike Pallock as well. Uh, we've seen a lot more here. So, uh, Grossman comes in with a lap time. It's not representative, of course. And Brandon Tabone is the first one to put a time in 145.00. But Kurt Camilleri, eight one hundredths of a second quicker. And he's taken um, provisional pole position. But there's a long way to go. Track Evolution is going to come into it. And John Derrick goes fastest now. Yeah, so we've got some really fast uh, returning drivers. So we've got Gaten Anger, who has won every single series of the GT Trophy. So season one, season two that just finished, and obviously trying to keep his crown for, for this one. So he's certainly going to have the target on his back. And uh, Sven Newman, who's obviously probably more for the GTEs, uh, that's where I know Sven from. Um, he actually came second in last season's uh, GT Trophy. Uh, season two so we got the first and second place in this in this race and in this series tonight so I'm, I'm expecting some big fireworks off them although Gaten is not the he's not the fastest man on track but he is he is Mr. Consistent and you will constantly see him up in the top five uh, and gaining them positions so he might not be the fastest guy on track but you know watch out for him he is so consistent and his lap times are so consistent on uh, any, every race that he's uh, been in um, and that's what's uh, sort of made him the champion that he is so he'll be the one to watch uh, this season that's for sure as dull as it can sound especially to um, new viewers or casual viewers consistency is key around here and, uh, in, in any race really consistency is the thing that you need the most you can't go throwing it down the road you can't go spinning spinning around them I in these gt3 cars you know they do have traction control they do have anti-lock brakes but they only help you to a degree that they're not it's not a magic bullet for your heavy right foot is it and it's, it's it's more of a yeah. it, it, it's it's more of a safety net than actually a safety harness yeah, it's understandable. It's, it's a lot more to do with the racecraft as well. You know, you got to understand Whoa. when you want to go in for your pit. Oh, you see like the it. slide there going through that kink? I'm sorry to, <laughs> to cut you off, but the oh, Porsche dear. just, it looks to get the rear end sliding, and you saw it there for uh, for Luke Reimer there. Yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting split, actually, the cars, as you're talking about the cars. We've got 14 BMW M4s. We got nine Porsche 11s. We have got six Lambos uh, and only two Ferraris. So out of all the GT cars that could have been chosen, we've 
you've only got four four representative classes uh, on field with the BMW seen to be the the car of choice at the moment as well. Is it possible, actually, Dennis, if we can get the if we can get the manufacturers up on the screen next to the flags and see, so we can have a visual idea of that split? Because yeah, there you go. We do have the facility to do that. Thanks to, by the way, SDK Gaming, who um, bring all these fantastic graphics to you. It's the best and most advanced graphic package in Tim Racing, and uh, you can get it on SDK SDK Gaming's website. Um, what you can't get on there is better English language skills, so I am screwed. Um, but uh, Hogdan Moldovan of Romania has gone to the top of the list. 144.253 with just three minutes to go ahead of John Derrick. That early lap from John Derrick looks like a strong contender for um, a, a front row or a second row start. He, he, he's holding up well, isn't it? Yeah, it seems to be holding up quite well. You know, I think a 144 would be uh, around about the top of the the top of the par. But you can sort of see all the way down to seventh place. You know, 0.4 of a second down, 0.5. So you know, the top 20 are within one second, and it's quite unusual to see Gate and Anger at the moment currently in P20. So this is going to be a new uncharted territory for him. Um, normally oh, hello! Oh, there's oh. a crash, and that's um, Beats. Beats. And uh, that, that's what happened to his car. He got beat by uh, got beat in as he crashed into the. Uh, I think that was actually Rymer, wasn't it? That was the Porsche that we were watching earlier on. It looked like he was almost stopped in the middle of the first corner, which is not really an ideal scenario for anybody. We're watching Kevin Kittleman here. He's a veteran of the uh, ARL GT Championship on the channel. Winkler. Carl Winkler has gone up into uh, eighth position, 144.8. So he's gone, he's settled into that gap kind of between those two packs of drivers that you were talking about, really. Um, just just over five tenths down. Normally, I'll tell you what, mate, if it was my, um, if it was a race that I was doing, I'd be very happy to have a time that Gaetan Anger has, has put in less than a second off of pole position, because usually that would mean that he's probably going to be in the top ten, but <laughs> nowhere near it. Oh, well, that's the difference, I think, with this series as well. Obviously, having the pros, we haven't got any AMs within this uh, category. So, all these guys out here are 2.2k minimum I rating. So, we're, they're, fast, they're fast guys. So, you know, the where you could gain places before and uh, gain up on the AMB, like you say, 0.9 of a second off the leader, it, it's not cutting the mustard in this. And uh, I think that's what we're going to come to see throughout the season is... Uh, all the places are going to be so close in these qualifying laps because because it's only one 60 minute race you haven't got two or three race two or race three to reverse grids and uh, all that kind of stuff you've literally got one qualifying one race of 60 minutes i have to point out as well i have to correct myself i think i think the car that was um having trouble in turn one might have been dennis meissner i'm not absolutely certain but i think um, it could have been Meissner or Brunstad, actually, because um, Reimer uh, went into... I think, yeah, I think it was, actually, um, Brunstad, because Reimer actually went fourth just, just after that, so he improved his time quite dramatically. Engel up into the top ten, as is Ronald Grossman. Uh, less than, less than seven-tenths off of pole. Oh, there we go, new pole position time. Provisional pole time, Leon Penn. The Scotsman 144.0 is a quarter of a second nearly ahead of Moldovan and that is a big marker to put in this late on in the session. The chequered flag is out so you can complete your lap if you are on one. Yeah, that's, that's new. It normally cuts off at 10 minutes, so this is this is all new. So, you know, last last gap effort for the guys. They know they're on the last lap, so uh, we'll see if anybody changes and uh, obviously gets into that pole position but at the moment like you say uh, Penn's at the front the Scotsman at 144 dead near enough so uh, really close at the top of that field there Andrew you know and I'm really looking forward to this race I think it's going to be uh, an amazing race I wonder if they've extended the qualifying slightly potentially because it's quite a long lap around here 145 um, maybe not enough time to get two runs in I'm not I'm not certain on that but here's um, hook on uh, Grebstad who's um, in 12th place and he's uh, three quarters of a second down. Couple of personal best sectors. You can see the green bars at the bottom indicating the personal best. Yellow means we haven't improved this time. But overall, it could still be a best time for him. Is his last sector going to go green? Could he even go purple in one of the sectors? Comes to the line, 
through the tri-oval here at Daytona. He crosses. Does he improve? Yes. Goes up to seventh place. And that is a sizable improvement. A quarter of a second is knocked off his time. He'll be very pleased, I'm sure. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, uh, got better as the lap went on there, as we see it, the cars coming over. So Penn's still keeping that uh, pole position. Uh, model in, in uh, second place and Derek in third at the moment. So uh, this is at the top of the change. Sorry to interrupt, mate, um, but Beats up into sixth place right at the death. So he literally got that lap in. He was the last man across the line, basically, in the Lamborghini Huracan. So up into P6. And um, yeah. A fantastic job there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, some really fast times there. Really close uh, throughout the whole field, near enough, all the way down to twenty fifth. It's uh, going to be a really close race, and uh, really looking forward to uh, the sixty minutes that are going to come uh, at us pretty fast. The flagman's still going for it, even though there's nobody on the track. Fair play to him. <laughs> um, Gaetan Hanger did get into the top ten in the end, in tenth. So. He was 0 0.67 down. So he did he did increase the he did um knock about half a second off his time. So very good indeed. But Leon Penn, imperious lap there, 144.03. Yeah, well clear of um well clear of the rest. He did he only did four laps as well, so he must have been out lap, fast lap, out lap, fast lap, that's all he got in. And he takes ball position, Andrew. Yeah, definitely. So Leon Penn in pole, uh, Bogdan Modavan in second, John Derrick in third, Sven Newman. So watch out for him in this race. Very fast driver in fourth, Luke Reimer in fifth, Chris Beats in sixth, Michael Grabstad in seventh, Michael Palic in eighth, uh, Milan Slutu probably mispronounced his name terribly bad in ninth, Gaten Anger in tenth. So uh, obviously, like you said, got up in the the, the last dash effort. Uh, Dominic Engel eleventh, Ronald Grossman twelfth. 13th, Carl Wilk, uh, Austin Kerrifel, 14th, Casper Sorensen, 15th, Matthias Beer, 16th, Richard Gaffanu in 17th, Carl Camari in 18th, Callum Garton in 19th, Brandon Taboni, 20, Jan Philippe Jankin in 21st, Florian Beer in 22nd, Dennis Meiser, 23rd, Kevin Kitterman, 24th, uh, and at the back end of the grid, we got Richard Watkins, 25th, Kieran Smart, 26th, Alex and uh, Skerrett in 27th, Thomas not in 28th and Simon Brunstad in 29th. So a bit of a, a bit of a shock there for Simon. He's normally quite a quick driver there, Andy. Yeah, I had to, not a lot of quality laps in there from from him really. But we'll see. Um, we we think he might have been involved in that collision though. We think he might have been the one who was uh, like kind of stationary in the middle of the first corner when yeah. um, Chris Beats came along and T boned him. Uh, nobody's fault, really, that one. Uh, I, do, I do want to point out that Richard Watkins, his, his teammate name is fantastic. Koala T Control Racing. <laughs> Which I think's fantastic. Um, he, he must be having a giraffe with that one. Oh, are uh, we going to be full of puns today, are we, Andy? Well, he's hoping to not be irrelevant <laughs> at the end. <laughs> oh, my word. <laughs> Alpaca, my things. Um, anyway. Leon anyway, Penn. off to the zoo. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Well, it, it, sometimes a bit of a, a bit of a menagerie out there, isn't it? Uh, especially turn one at Daytona. We're going to get the joy of that very soon. Oh, indeed, yes. as uh, Leon Penn in the Porsche is the first one behind the Porsche safety car. And um, a mix of cars there up the front as well. So we got Porsche yeah. in front, yeah, and the Lambo in third. So nice to see the top. Three classes or top three in different classes. I tell you what, when the when I first saw that BMW, I wasn't sure about it, the the looks of it. But the more I see it, the more it kind of grows on me, and it looks mean and it's a pretty yeah. big car as well out on the grid. So we make jokes about the the M8 being being gigantic. This is pretty big as well. It but certainly big, is. And also a big grid, 29 cars who are going to go to battle here at the Daytona International Speedway. Well, the safety car is preparing to come in and Leon Penn backing them up. He's going to wait until the perfect time to hit it and get this one underway. Yeah, so I see you taking as far into the start as he goes away. So great, great start for Leon Penn. 
Yeah, it's a short run to the first corner, so going later is certainly better. Well, let's see, let's hope everyone gets through this okay. Well, they do have quite high I ratings, so we're hopeful they go through. Penn leads John Derrick in second. He's got ahead of Moldovan already. Neumann is in fourth ahead of Reimer. And oh, off the two cars off in the background. And I think one of them is uh, Sorensen, Kasper Sorensen, who went so far off the track. He was classified as the leader for a moment. And Skerritt as well. Um, who was in 27th place, he's come a cropper there at the start. We'll get a replay of that in a few minutes' time when we get a bit of, a bit of breathing space here, but it's Penn from Moldovan. Reimer up two positions, he's got ahead of Neumann as well. Mike Paluk in fifth, sixth is Sutianu, then Beats in Grebstad, Winkler and Engel, that's the top ten. And Gaetan Anger down to 19th, Andrew. Wow, I mean, he's got some places, he's lost nine places, so clearly had an incident there in the first race. So, got a lot of making up to do, but like I said at the start, he's a very consistent driver, so I'd imagine he would uh, start picking them off um, as we look at a, a, a replay to see what happened, obviously, in a brand new car. He normally drives oh. the, I mean, it's, oh, he saw it off there, and, oh, some damage there, so I think he might have to come back in uh, and get his fast repair there, so that, that's the... That's the kink coming out into um, turn T4, um, which is a oh, very fast lap down there. Oh, there's all sorts going on, and that's quite a big crash going on. Three or four cars involved. Oystein Hierford is one of them. It's a, it's a, it's a massive pileup. Anger is, is involved in that one as well. Oh, it's still going on. It is still going on, Andrew, and, and that is a disaster. Oh, that's an absolute disaster. Getting anger, obviously, must be be angry in that car so uh, I think he'll be towing back to the pits oh, but that does take made a oh. it's made a mistake and Moldovan is through Bogdan Moldovan into the lead and followed by Neumann so disaster for Penn he lost one place in turn one he lost another place shortly after and now the BMW is coming yeah, definitely. So obviously we saw there the wrong line into turn one, went into it a bit too hot and obviously went out round, hit the uh, gravel on the outside, which would have scrubbed a lot of his speed and put him off on. He was actually quite lucky there, Andrew, not to uh, not to spin the car, but managed to keep his place and currently still in the lead pack, so in third place at the moment and obviously going to be tracking down Sven Newman. But we know he's a fast driver, we saw by that in the qualifying. Um, so we'll see if he can uh, make his way back up. But uh, Bogdan is in uh, first place and uh, in that BM and it's sort of stretching his legs with a little bit of a gap between second and third there. A few cars in the pits as well here for Brunstad, Scarrett, Beer, Derek. Um, in fact, both beers are in as well, so that's um, that's not good for them. Garten as well looks like he's been caught up in it, and, and this is um, the the and the Orcher off into the wall there, and then somebody who's not again, people are people not uh, seeing the accident in front of them and trying to use some kind of maybe a bit of uh circumspectness there, Andrew? You, you surely you can see the smoke, surely you can see cars sideways and in the wall. Well, I mean, yeah, that bus stop is quite open, through, isn't it? Yeah, and people are going through without without even contemplating the brake pedal. It looks like this is Matthias Beer, he tries to come through and then he gets turned around. I don't know if there's a great deal that anybody could have that he could have really done about that, but he was just trying to thread his way through, but at least he looked like he'd slowed down a little bit. Somebody facing the wrong way. Oysan Hereford um, had an issue there. This is Richard Gafenku. He's just taken 14th place from Kurt Camilleri, their teammates, so that won't hurt Camilleri too much. Um, because now he can follow Gafenku and maybe they can get booked towards the front, but uh, Tabone and Grossman very, very close together as well. Let's sign with the Maltese driver, Tabone. And uh, Grossman is on the... Oh, that's very, very close. Tabone on the inside. Oh, he's brave trying to take him on that corner as well, because he's only no, really one no line in No uh, great really on the outside. No, no, it, definitely not, but... What I was, was going to say before it all kicked off on the back straight was about Leon Penn and his struggles was that, um, that the wider line is, is viable. It's, it's, it's actually quicker in some cases in, in certain cars, but it, it was just a little bit too wide and you can't really do it when running closely with a driver because it closes up so quickly that the inside just becomes wide open. Uh, is he going to defend now Moldovan from Neumann going down the back straight? to the bus stop chicane well he didn't have to that time but 
he may have to very very soon you've got um, Chris Beats is uh, he's side by side with Reimer I think Reimer's had an issue you know he might have a, I reckon that might have been a slow down penalty Andrew for the for the chicane yeah it's quite easy to do off that you know you're trying to get the fastest line possible going through that bus stop turn as we look at um, turn one here so Modavan is in first and Newman right on his tail so we see the effect of that slipstream uh, Sven Newman goes out wide to try and get this cut back into the corner so we'll see if he can try and get it done coming down into turn two but no uh, Modavan keeps first place Newman to that way down. so Newman's up two places Penn's obviously down two Palic is up four places in fourth place, but the biggest mover on the grid is Kittleman, uh, currently in uh, P12, so up 12 places uh, in P12. So uh, an outstanding race for him so far. Obviously, a lot of carnage has happened in his first opening opening uh, laps that we've seen, Andy, and uh, some cars that we would expect to be at the front have unfortunately been uh, caught up in some incidents, and uh, they're going to have a long race ahead of them now. Oh, mate, and, and we, well, we said... We said when we covered the 24-hour race that we did on the channel, the Spa 24 hours the other week, that um, you know the earlier you come a cropper, the worse it is, and it's a bit stating the, the bleeding obvious, isn't it? But it is having issues at this point in the race. It just compounds everything because you, you're going to have damage, you're going to get lapped sooner, you're going to get the, you're going to have to get out of the way of the leaders, and, and it just it just spirals from there. It's exponential losses kind of thing, but tell you what we're seeing now and, and it is a it is a trait of this Daytona circuit that the front seven are actually getting closer together again it's actually condensing with, with the the huge effect of the slipstream round here seventh place um, Carl Winkler who actually started 13th he's only 2.4 seconds off the lead yeah, I mean, we can see here on the thing how much Sven Bumping Newman him. is right underneath his wing of uh, Moldovan. And uh, that's been the biggest thing of this track. You know, do you want to be in that first place coming into the latter half of this race? Because you can get taken on the Moldovan's line. Moldovan's wide. Moldovan's oh, wide. Neumann's through. Line. He's through. And he might bring Leon Penn with him. Penn's going to try to take to the outside. If you thought about maybe a, a dummy, you can send it into into that tight right-hander, but you've got to be a bit closer than that. You've got to be, you've got to have possibly a little bit of an overlap to really make that count. And that's uh, jan Philip Janka going a bit wide there and getting passed by Watkins. A quality move there by the Brit. <laughs> oh, you can get his own eye on it. <laughs> No, no, I, obviously I know Philip. Yeah, I know. I know Philip Jank from obviously races in the Formula V on a Monday night. Um, so uh, I know him quite well, very quick driver. And also, as you can see him here, uh, a different car, obviously, than the Formula V, a GC3, considerably faster than, than Formula V cars. But uh, a yeah, very good driver in, in his stable as we uh, see the front of the, of the race. So we'll, we'll see if uh, Moldovan can uh, obviously get up behind Newman and. Uh, get a full effect of that slipstream coming down this second half after the bus stop so it's vital you get that good exit out of the bus stop to see yourself all the way around this last part and all the way over to the start finish line so that's a crucial part of the uh, track there Andrew as we're watching Leon Penn who was started in pole position unfortunately made a mistake round the first corner uh, and down to third but well within reach of the, the, the top position, uh, as are all of the uh, top five at the moment, Andy. So covered by one second. So top five are sort of pulling away a little bit, a second over between five and six. But, you know, with this slipstream effect, I'm pretty sure it will close up quite soon. Yeah, um, staying pretty constant. Grebstad and Winkler just dropping off a tiny, tiny bit, but only 1.1 seconds separate the top five here. It's, you know, it's an old saying on the channel, but you really could throw a tea cosy over the lot of them. Uh, probably get them all. This is um, Sutiano, another one of the Romanians in the race, and uh, another one behind, Richard Gafenko, who um, I've raced against and that's commentated on many times. And uh, he's had a, a very good start, actually, up from 17th place, four positions gained for him. Brandon Tabone's up 11th as well, from 20th on the grid. So the, the Maltese. Um, isn't going to be crossed with that one. He's going to be very happy indeed. 
Yeah, so there's some big winners in the in the race and some really big losers. So you got uh, John Derrick uh, down 21 positions. So he started. He was on third on the grid, I believe, and uh, and, and he could have been to second on the first lap as well. He made a great start. Yeah, he did, and currently sat down in 24th oh. uh, in a lonely position down there, and obviously getting anger. Currently a lap down. So his uh, his championship defence at the moment has uh, been put to the test in uh, round one at round Daytona. We've all been where John Derrick is. We've all been where Gaetan Anger is. <laughs> it, it is not a good place to be in. Um, what is a good place to be in is where Bogdan Moldovan is, I think, because... And, and yes, you know, there's 50 minutes to go. Um, but if, if he can stay in this kind of position, you know, he's got the perfect platform to attack from on the last lap hasn't he? I know we're yeah. looking quite a way in front to the last lap of the race and you know famous last words because we've already seen 10 drivers at least bite the dust but hey he's, nah. he's in a good spot right now he can save some fuel as well if he needs to yeah definitely there will be a, a, a wide. stop yeah, we will be a pit stop for the guys as well during this race. So, you know, obviously being in that second position in the in the draft of the first car, you're going to be saving fuel. So, you know, being in that second place is probably actually not a bad thing. Just keeping pace, keeping behind Sven uh, and letting Sven cut the air in front of him to use more fuel. So uh, there's all the strategies that come into play with this race as well, Andrew. You know, with the where you go into the pits, are you going to go in early? Are you going to go right to the end? How much fuel did the guys start with? Are they, are they going to the full? fuel tank or have they gone with a, sh a smaller amount to be getting in so you know all that to take into effect not just the fact that like you say the racing on track you've got to have that race craft and understand when do I need to come in to get the most and, and try and gain some places that's it and you know if, if, um, if you're new to watching these GT races I'm sure that on pretty much all the races we do there's, there's at least one person who's, who's never seen one of these before and uh, Welcome, obviously it's great to have you with us on the on Apex Racing TV. Like the video and subscribe, obviously, if you if you like if you like the content, if you like oh and oh, that's Ronald one. Grossman in the wall. He's not going anywhere, I think he's stuck in that wall there, Andy. Is he is he in the barrier? Let's see. Looks like it. So he's coming up to the bus stop chicane. Turns in. Oh he loses the rear loses. on the way in. And there's no stopping that from going round. How is it ended up getting it? stuck in the wall? Did he just reverse into it? It looks like he did. Oh, and it's just grabbed him like a like a <laughs> magnet, hasn't it? Oh, he's out. Oh, obviously, he's uh, out. I mean, it took, him, a bit of space. it took him 20 seconds to get out of there, but whatever he's done, he's managed to escape. Uh, but just, just to finish my point quickly is that for those people who are new, you're probably wondering why does fuel saving matter? Well, it just means that on your pit stop, if that's a mistake by Meisner, he might just get away with that. Um, yeah, when it comes to your pit stop, which these, all these guys are going to make at least one, you're going to put less fuel in, so you're going to be stationary for less time, and that's what allows you to make the big gains. Um, and as Andrew was saying, it depends how much fuel you started with, of course, but if you can put less in at the pit stop, you could be quids in. So that's, that's a certainty, but you know, it'd be interesting to see what it is, but it looks like there's just a long train, uh, not a lot happening at the moment between the top five, all, all following in a train at the moment. You know, obviously, uh, you, you'll see Modovan get right on the back of Newman with a slipstream, because uh, unfortunately he hasn't, as we see Penn trying to get on the outside of Modovan uh, round. Right. Uh, Oh, no, he might get him actually. Uh, going into oh! first <laughs> under his ring, uh, under his ring. So uh, yeah, that was a bit close there. Tell you what, I, I probably wouldn't have done that. Um, <laughs> I, I wouldn't have risked that one. But he knows, you know, this is why these guys are, are you know, pro drivers. They, they've got, um, you know, they've oh. got. Oh, and that's Brunstad. And Scarrett, I think. So is that two Norwegians clashing? I think it is. Uh, he's not having the best round to start of his championship. So is it round that turn? Turn, turn four, I think again. Yeah, turn four. Oh, oh he's already of him. Oh, I mean, 
<laughs> and it'll tap to her, so there you go, I'm just sorry, to see the face. <laughs> I don't know how he managed to drive into the stationary car. I don't know how then the, the other car managed to drive into it twice. But never mind. Um, anyway, less said about that, the better. Kit up on this here, and we're taking you right into the heart of the action with the camera looking back from the Indy Auto Sport car. And that's Sutiano just behind. Then Gafenku, then Engel. Camilleri, you can see them in the background. Those two there, just having a watching brief at the moment. But... Um, I'll tell you something, that when you, I've um, been away from my race for quite some time, six months or so, and I do, this Lamborghini um, looks fantastic on the screen as it's going around the track, it really does. Yeah, it's, uh, it's one of the all-round cars, actually. I, dro I drove it in the Season 1 of the GG Trophy, and it was a really well-planted car. Um, it seems to have gone a little bit out of the favour, more for, obviously, the introduction of the Port and the BM, that people have gone over to that. But, you know, uh, we know that that Lambo is a fast car, uh, really good on the corners, and actually got good straight line speed, as uh, we see uh, my man taking a slightly different line than the rest, than the, the, uh, the rest of the field, taking that inside line into turn one where the rest of them like to sweep out wide and then cut in but certainly doesn't seem to be affecting his pace as we see Penn trying to send it up the inside of Mordovan and uh, yeah he's uh, he's just buying his time I think he wants past uh, if, uh, if I'm not mistaken Andy he was having a look mate he really was and that was as close as we've come you could see as soon as Moldovan went for the wide line in turn one that um you could almost hear, you could almost hear when the driver gets excited in the car because the throttle comes on earlier than it ever has before. And that's what happened with Leon Penn. He just absolutely booted it through that, that tight set. Oh, oh and that's not Kevin Kittleman. We were just talking about him. We were just talking about the Lamborghini and how stable it was. I'm hoping he's not just lost it there. But Sutiano is in there as well, which makes me wonder, is there going to be a dodgy move? Let's see. Or is it going to be something that happens behind? Is Kittleman going to be an innocent victim? Oh. So it looks like that uh, Gafenku. Did Gafenku that maybe give him a tap, was it? Um, Who was it? Who's the. Camelot? 95, did you say? Yeah, I think it was 95, wasn't it? But yeah, obviously Kittleman doing really well. I think he was up 14, 15 places from where he started. He was he was certainly on a charge, and unfortunately, uh, oh. as we see Smart into the wall, and I think he is stuck. As we can see, his back wheels off the ground. Uh, very much ground. It's, in there. Coming, it's coming down, but he's decided to tow back to the pits, and that is at the same place that we saw Grossman's accident. Yeah, so he did the same stop, thing. It? Just trying to carry too much speed into the corner. Oh, and that is well and truly just sunken in there. It's like a knife into a block of cheese. And uh, that, that, that's, got, that's, the, that's the most worst thing on iRacing is when you have to tow back to the pits because you're just looking at that timer counting down. It's normally around about a minute oh. and a half, two minutes. It's, uh, it's painful. It's been a very exciting race so far. I've enjoyed this one. And um, yeah. only one third of the way through at the end, well, in about a lap's time. Yeah, definitely. These are, they are all always full action races these and uh, great cars to drive and like you say you know people say well this has got abs you should drive gtes but uh and power steering and all that good stuff on these cars but it makes for some really interesting racing and and people get um too complacent sometimes with us we've seen a few people coming into the bus stop uh and getting it completely wrong so these cars can still bite you uh, it's just what we and, said and in qualifying race. just what we yeah, said in qualifying it isn't it it's like it's you know it gives you a bit of help but it's not a a, a one yeah, size fits all solution to a problem, is it? Like you can still crash these cars, you can still spin these cars around if you get too eager on the throttle. Yeah, definitely. I do like what they've done with this track with the the end of that bus stop. It used to be uh, obviously quite treacherous with the grass on the inside because just used to, every car used to do it. And I think they've actually tarmacked it now, so you can cut that corner right. like everybody normally does, which uh, saves a lot of spinning uh, out of this corner, but. Didn't help a few drivers on uh, lap number two, I think, Andy. Oh, well, no. Uh, we, saw, we saw the, the absolute <laughs> carnage that ensued after, after that. Oh, that's a mistake by Grebstad, I think. He's gone slightly too wide. He had about two or three bites at trying to get that into the left hand there. And that's going to set Winkler up to maybe have a go. It, 
to the hairpin. No, not this time, so he's got to follow him through. Um, these two are probably quite frustrated, actually, uh, Andrew, because they're just out of range of those of that front group. They're just a second or two behind. Um, if they can just get onto the back, then, um, you know, they've got a shot of winning this race. But that was Cam uh, Sutianu getting past Kevin Kettleman. Yeah, these two having a right battle. Oh, yeah, these, yeah, these two having a right battle. Obviously, it was uh, car 55. It was in 95. So, so the, obviously, uh, over over egged his uh, entry speed into turn five, um, uh, and unfortunately, took Kevin out. But as we see on track, these two are having a really good battle on track for 13th and 14th place at the moment. But oh, Kevin Kittleman seems to be on the track. Did he not get a touch into that corner? Then I I, I was looking at something else think, when that came up because. Um, yeah, he, he, he sort of, uh, he went in there too high. I mean, you could see how fast he was going. He completely lost his braking area. And I okay. think he just he just clipped the rear quarter panel of uh, Kevin as he went into that corner. But, you know, these two, you know, you can see their speeds are very similar. As uh, oh, side by side in the bus stop, very, very ambitious. But both managed to give each other, other enough space. Uh, you know Kevin what that's done? That. You know what that's done, mate, don't you? It's just brought the rest of them into play behind. Yeah, They're just exactly. now in danger from three more cars because they decided to be stubborn and go side by side through a 100-mile-an-hour corner, uh, which doesn't ever really end too well, even if you do survive it and don't end up having to tow back to the pits. You might lose some position, but keep an eye out on that. This is Winkler, and um, he's just getting out of the way. It looks like um, Luke Reimer, so quite sure why that is. He might have had a slow down penalty, I'm not sure. Can get slow down on the first corner? I don't think he can. Uh, very, very strange pass there on that one. Uh, obviously, he Unless he got it onto the, the drivers. Unless he got it on the previous, the, you know, the little, the little twisty bit after that. But John Derrick sets the fastest lap, by the way, down in 22nd place, 144.5. That showed that the pace that he'd got in his car um, despite being all the way down there. He'll pick some people off, don't you worry? He's still two-thirds of the way through. Yeah, definitely Go started, started up in third. Started up in third place, obviously got up to second. Unfortunately, had an incident which has put him down to 22nd, but certainly a, a fast man on track. But he's uh, got a big mountain to climb to try and get up. But, you know, that one extra position can make all the difference come the end of the season. So, you know, these, these drivers will never give up uh, and, and fight for every position uh, at the moment. Moldovan leading then over Neumann and then it's Penn then Pallock Pallock started in 8th so he's had a good uh, a good run here Beats is in 5th you can see him there in the Lamborghini the two behind the battling Reimer and Gravestad but they've lost touch with this group now that's what the battling has done and they're yeah, swapping the positions with Winkler Top five covered by one second, and then uh, there's about uh, a second gap. Beats obviously closing, the, trying to close the gap there, uh, and obviously you've got Gribstad and Reimer there to get in. There's uh, Calamari into the first uh, first corner, two oh. wide. Oh, taking that up inside. So uh, luckily, managed to both keep it uh, clean as such. With um, was that was an angle, yeah. So that's angle and. Uh, Kamari fighting out in the in, in the first corner. Two one. A little a little wheel arch to wheel arch action there, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> Sutianu is in the BMW. He's flashing the lights at Kevin Kittle and he wants to get past, but of course that's what happened. Uh, of course he was involved with him before, wasn't he? In that other accident, Camilleri's got back past Engel, you know. There he is, Kurt Camilleri, back past the Porsche. Who has like half a look into that left hand hairpin but it's probably the worst corner to try and maybe have, have half a move because it just hurts you all the way down this back straight but he's close enough that he can get a strong slipstream really use it to his advantage and yeah, see as he as pull onto the back straight yeah we see him close up here right into the bus stop right on the back end so he'll have to back out a little bit to try and give that slingshot through the through the bus stop and try and take him on the second half of the course but a real good battle here between Engel uh, and Kamari uh, for 11th and 12th respectively so uh, yeah it's it's lots of battles on crap oh he lost a bit of 
Lost a bit of time there, did uh, Engel on Kanamari. So Kanamari got a really good exit out of that corner, and Engel just slightly off the back of him. So should still be in the slipstream. Uh, as we see, cars going too wide into uh, turn one. It's always a, oh. it's always a touchy moment to, uh, to get. But these drivers, obviously, like you say, from the pro status, so uh, very well averse to uh, two cars going down the corner that normally have one car going down. Webster. Um, Tabone, Tabone, this time coming off second best, but he's still less than a car's length behind the Norwegian driver. They're going to the left hander, the right hander, sorry. Close with that huge grill on the front of that BMW, it just looks mean as it pursues to prey. And Grebstad two seconds behind Winkler. Winkler is now 1.4 behind Reimer. Actually, Reimer, Andrew, is, is catching that front group, so it's going to be a six-way battle. Pretty, like, pretty much is already. Yeah, point, half a second off, so you can see him. He's just just off the tail, but obviously will be getting that slipstream effect and seem to have got away from Winkler. So maybe Winkler had a poor exit. Or oh, as we see a terrible oh. exit there from Luke Weimer. So just lost all the advantage that he had coming out of the bus stop. Oh, so man. I think Winkler will be catching him. He, he's going to be so annoyed because he was the fastest man on the track apart from John Derrick on the lap lap. And we've covered how fast John Derrick's been over the last uh, 10 minutes or so. But yeah, oh, he's going to be frustrated is um, Reimer because he's lost one and a half seconds and the slipstream. It's only seven tenths between the top five now. It's not no. even closer. <laughs> that's that's not even, you know, nose to tail, that side to side on probably some of them. It's uh, it's so close at the front of this pack with them, with them all fighting and tussling. But it'd be interesting to see when they come in for the pit stop, which uh, I reckon it's going to be round about between about 40, 40 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes of the stop coming in uh, the sea. So the undercut will be round about 33 minutes, I reckon. So if we see somebody coming in there around that time, yeah, they'll be trying to get that undercut. As we see here, you know, it's like a parade lap with these uh, five cars like nose to tail and it's nice to see the mix of cars that we have actually got in there so we've got a BM we've got a Porsche and we've actually got the Lambo on the back so three different classes in the top five all covered by a second as you mentioned though earlier um, <laughs> it's still the undercut is going to be difficult because they're going to have to put a bit more fuel in so yeah they might get an instant benefit, but they also lose a few seconds in the pits. Um, I'm, I'm noticing as well, as well, by yeah. the way. What's that? It's that slipstream effect as well. Yeah. If you come in now, you're going to lose all that. So it's, it's what do you do? It's like, it's like being in a, a DRS training Formula One, isn't it? You want to get out of it, so you try and get out of it. But also on some tracks, it, you, you know, you, you were gaining more with the DRS than, than, you, than you would... Uh, you know, that's what you would lose when you come in. So we'll see. Uh, one thing I have noticed is Brandon Tabone is only five seconds off the lead. He's in ninth position. And this is after half an hour's racing. And Gafenko is still less than 10 seconds behind the leader as well in 10th. So all of these drivers, if they can manage the, the tyres, manage the car well, I don't think they'll be taking tyres, Andrew. I don't know what you think, but in my experience, it, you know, you don't tend to in any one of these hour races. No, for sure, they won't be taking tyres. The only way they would take tyres is if they made a mistake at the start and, it, and didn't uncheck it. So these guys <laughs> will certainly won't be taking them tyres. So if we do see someone taking tyres, we know he's probably made a mistake on his, uh, his initial setup. So these races, you, uh, you, you just take on, uh, on the fuel during the stop. So it's all about that fuel saving. Um, and these long trains will be benefiting the cars third, fourth, fifth back from the train because they'll be getting the ones with the, with the maximum draft and saving the maximum amount of fuel. And you probably find they're coasting a little bit into the corners and trying to save just to eke out that extra lap, which, like you said, would mean less fuel in the pit stop, which means less time. I'm just taking... Um not unchecking the tyres off my bingo card of things that I've done to cock up races in the past, so that one's another yeah. one. Um, left the pit limiter on and not assigned a button, that's another one. Uh, hopefully nobody does that in this race. But um, 
Mike <laughs> Mike Pollock is in fourth place. It's very much a holding pattern at the front, isn't it? You know, we're into that, yeah. that phase of the race where everyone's just kind of... It's a bit like that cycling race, isn't it? Where Oh, there's a there we go. In comes Moldovan. So he's going to go for it. He's the first yeah. one in. In the BMW. So he will, so he will, he will have enough. Do you think it's a good move or not? Only time will tell. You know, he's uh, obviously thinking that that, that, that was uh, a good time for him to do it. What he will do is um, he, he will get out again and as long as you know he's got somebody in front of him to have that draft then we'll, we'll have to see but he will be taking on a lot of fuel obviously 30 minutes left of this race he won't have to stop again um, but it'd be uh, it'd be interesting to see if that um, tactic pays off for him Dominic Engel in the pits as well Janka in as well I was going to ask you as well just out of the people that were in there um, judging by your experience of the series and driving the car a fair bit and whatever who, who would your money be on at this point after half race distance if you look at that top seven or eight? I mean, obviously, I think you can't look past uh, Sven Newman, very quick driver, obviously, you know, experience uh, in this car. Obviously, had the experience of the last season in this car, so probably knows it very well. Um, so Newman's placed in a, in a good place, but Penn, he seems to be... Uh, He's got the bit between his teeth, obviously started off in that pole position and wants to start with a race win, but I think Sven Newman at the moment is probably my take for the, for the race win. Hey, something interesting that I've noticed as well, John Derrick, we talked about how fast he's been going, but, but he's taken 10 seconds out of the leaders in the last 20 minutes, basically. Um, yeah, he's not going to catch them by the end, but there's definitely a possibility that he could get into the top 10. It's it's a long shot, that's for sure. Uh, some Reimer, Winkler and Grebstad in at the same time. It's been interesting race in the pit lane. Yeah, so the top so the top four, one of the top fours uh, in that big group all going in together, so they'll all come out together. So we've got Newman and Penn, obviously, and Paulich, uh and Beats for the top four that are still yet Kittleman. to pit. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. Kittleman in, Camilleri, Gafenku, Sutianu, Sorensen, Watkins... They're all coming in too. Are we going to get any more pitters from lower down the order as well? Minot is in. John Derrick yeah. continues. Moldovan. Um, so Moldovan's 41 seconds behind. Let's see where he is. Can we get a camera on Moldovan? Because he's going to be. The, this is going to be the key. Mm. Can he get out? Does he get out ahead of Reimer and Grebstad and Winkler and all those guys? He should do. It's going to but, be on the exit. Yeah, he does. But I think the key thing here is the next the next lap or two, no doubt that the top four or five are going to be in. And have they managed to get him with the overcut or has the undercut come to fruition for Moldovan? That, that we'll have to see that. But it's Neumann in the lead, then it's Penn, then Pollock, then Beats. Um, it's not bad for Beats really, Andrew, is it? Because... First thing we saw him do on the stream was crash, and now he's done them um, having a great race in fourth place after a good yeah, qualifying. Certainly is, and as we see, Moldo, Moldovan, he's uh, he's six seconds, so he has benefited from actually pitting earlier from uh, Winkler, Reimer, and Grimstad, who uh, obviously he was racing with. So at the moment, he's six seconds ahead, so he seems to be profited. But this is where we're going to see. So we see the front runners, and we see Newman, Palik, but don't. Uh, Taboni in Beats and Penn actually stay out, so maybe that slipstream in um, has gained him the the extra fuel to uh, get another lap out. So it'd be interesting to see how these pit stop all unwind. But at the moment, uh, Moldovan seems to uh, have uh, nailed it. So we'll see where he comes out in in, in respect to Newman, Palich, and Taboni. But uh, he's not far away from them. Well, now's the time. Now's the time to hit your marks, to keep your nerve, and to be brave out there coming into the pits. You want to get as close to that pit entry speed limit line as possible at the highest speed possible, but you do not want to go over it because that can be a drive-through, it can be a stop-and-go penalty, there's all sorts of punishments. iRacing can oh, give you a listen. Oh, and there Moldovan. This is, this is the race off the pit lane. And Moldovan has got ahead of Paluk and Sven Neumann, so that is unbelievable. And Beer has made a pit stop at the start of the race but he is a bit out of position because it was an early stop Andrew will he have to stop again 
I mean, almost certainly will have to stop for a splash and dash. But, you know, we know Matthias Beer from uh, previous seasons. He's very fast and always has very vibrant paint jobs, as we can see there. Looks like yes. some of these uh, splashed some uh, paint all over. As we oh, see, uh, the two, oh, 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 no. You know, that's, what's that? that's coming out of the pit. So probably uh, tires a little bit cold and oh, pushing it a little bit it? too hard. Does that count as turn four, that one, or is that turn... Oh, who knows? I think, I think that is the turn. Oh, the contact in the in the kink. I think, but I think they both survived it. Now Chris Beats is in. Leon Penn is in. These two. Are... Well, this is obviously the unwind doesn't work, and who paid the best? I think. Yeah, we, we need to look at Moldovan, I think, and see what he's doing. He's just ahead of that that battle. He's going to come round the bank in, and can he get in front? stay in front really of Penn and Beats that's going to be the key to the rest of this race can Moldovan can he make this pitch strategy work of course the tyres they haven't changed them so we're not exit. going to be saying we're not going to be saying is, you know has he got the fresh tyres or not but Moldovan where is he yeah, it's it's going through the be close. Corner. he's going to be behind Beats and Penn Penn's still in the lead, then he retains it, but Moldovan's got great speed coming onto the circuit. And he's in the rhythm of the race, Andrew. He's he's not, you know, it's hard sometimes to come out of the pits and be really on it. And this is what Leon Penn's going to have to do if he wants to win the race. Yeah, definitely. But, you know, we saw that undercut, as we were talking about earlier, it seemed to work really well for Moldovan. You know, Sven Newman at the moment, two seconds off the pace, so where they stopped, that group of uh, Newman, Palic, Winkler, Reimer, uh, all seem to have lost out a little bit more on this. So uh, these three drivers at the front have uh, one profited for Pitinelli and the, the other two for going as far into the race as they can uh, seem to have been the, the, the tactics of choice for the pit stops. You know what, actually, Moldovan's strategy has done. It's basically just brought him out in the same place that he was before. So winners and losers, not really many uh, in, in that in that entire shake-up. Kurt Camilleri in 16th place, started in 18th. He's not had the cleanest outing, but he's still um, in with a shot of a top 10 at the end of this one. So after the pit stop phase, then Leon Penn leads. Moldovan is uh, second, then it's beats Neumann, Paluk, Winkler, Reimer, Tabon, Grebstad, and Gafenku is the top 10. Kittleman is 11, Engel is 12, Sorensen 13th, then it's Meissner, then it's Sutianu, Camilleri is 16th, Watkins 17th, Janka 18th, 19th John Derrick, 20th is Matthias Beer, so he did have to come into the pits one more time. Ronald Grossman in 21st, Tom Miner 22nd, then Oyston Hereford, Florian Beer, in 24th, 25th is Kieran Smart, Simon Brunstad and Alexander Scarrett are the last runners in 26th and 27th. We've lost Callum Garten and Gaetan Anger on the first lap. We saw there as uh, you were going through the uh, current standings, we saw Bonavan take first place off Leon Penn going around the first corner so a, a great move there from Moldovan to take first place but Leon Penn will be hot on his tail so currently half a second behind him so Moldovan seems to be the man on the move at the moment trying to get 0 0.5, 0 0.6 of a second out of uh, Penny he needs to try and make it count on this inside uh, portion of the track to try and get rid of that slipstream effect going around uh, yeah, as we see a lot of battling here uh, Sutu seems to be um, involved in a lot of incidents today and a lot of battling on track as he's uh, currently with uh, Watkins right oh, on his tailpipe. That's the corner, I think we had the contact earlier on, but trying to go around the outside, it's not really going to happen there. But um, but yeah, what a moron, I missed the move for the lead. Apologies everyone. Um, that's okay, man. You, uh, you, were in your, you were in your element going down the uh, standings, so uh, I gave you that moment. <laughs> Hold the button. Is uh, is now in the league. Well, I think I think uh, in my head anyway, I didn't think he was going to go for it that quickly because I thought, well, he might wait for the end of the race because it's proven that it's been very difficult to get a gap. Because if you remember, he was in the lead for quite a lot of laps at the beginning, and he wasn't able to break away. Oh, he's wide though. Oh, he, he had an awful, awful turn in there, but somehow he managed to. Um, keep that 
on a, a pretty, a fairly ideal line. Yeah, a little bit of snake in there, but what this is doing is obviously now, you know, Newman's not catching up much, still 2.3 seconds behind. So there's, uh, you got the one, two, three, as we can see in the shot now, and the slight gap between back to Newman. But they, they seem to have lost Winkler and Reimer, who are right on the tail. So I don't know if there's something different. It's about five seconds back now. So they may have had an incident uh, behind them, but it seems to be Newman and Pavlich on their own as we're watching Kevin Kittleman uh, battling it out with. Uh, Darren Engel in 11th place. Uh, Kittleman's done really well tonight, obviously up 12 places. Uh, the highest mover on the on the grid tonight. So started off at the back of the grid and uh, has had an outstanding race. Obviously had a little incident uh, coming around this exact corner that uh, scuppered a couple of places for him, but seemed to have got back on the pace and is uh, now trying to get into that top 10 position. And would he be able to do it? I um, mean, he's gonna be 10, about 11 seconds off 10 temp spot at the moment, so it might be a bit of a struggle to get that gap. Uh, but certainly, 11 places that's right in front of him is uh, what he's uh, targeting at the moment. I wonder if they've just been battling away and kind of lost themselves a bit of time as a as a consequence. So I'm not, yeah, I'm not not too sure really. But now they're, they're still pretty much sharing the same piece of tarmac. He's got good overspeed here as Reimer. Oh, but uh, here's the battle for the lead. That's intensifying again. It's rekindled. Leon Penn got within a tenth of a second of Moldovan, but again, are we going to see Andrew the the patience coming into play? Is Penn just going to wait for the last lap? Because, to be honest, it's I'm going to say it's really easy to pass by the time you get to that tri-oval line but many have done it in the past we've seen in, in various series that it, it comes down to the wire on this track yeah we've seen i mean we've seen the overspeed from uh, second place coming on to first place around that last corner it's all about that exit but i think at the moment if it, if it was me i'd rather be in that second place to get try and get that slipstream because then the, the first place is just going to be looking all around him to see and that's where you can maximise the overtaking ability and uh, and just picking your line going into that last corner, uh, take the start finish. So it could be a grandstand finish here for the first race as we see him, 0.3 of a second, you know, between the top two. Uh, Beats sort of getting off the pace a little bit, 0.8 of a second uh, and Newman still on 2.2 seconds. So Chris Beats just sort of still there in the background, but losing a little bit of ground to the front two at the moment who seem to be the ones to watch on this race still half a second behind though i think he's he's just waiting there to see i mean going on about john derrick a fair bit in this one but he could have won this race today he's been faster than pretty much anybody out there 144.6 that time he got past jan philip yanke on that lap only two seconds behind richard watkins who um Walking starting 25th and he's up to 17th. Um, I wonder if we can get Dennis actually um, the gains and losses uh, up there just to see so the viewers at home can see what uh, what everybody's done from their starting position this time because there's definitely there it is look and Andrew you see some big numbers there. Tabon up 12 places, Kittleman 13, Meissner 10. You also see some big downs as well. John Derrick started in third, down to 18. You've got Grossman down to 21st, Hereford down to uh, 14th. I've had some battles with Hereford before. Good, fair racer. And, yeah, certainly uh, seems some big mixes there, doesn't there, Andy? Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, even in the top, you know, even in the top ten, got large movers and shakers going on. Defenko up seven, Watkins up eight, as we mentioned. This is Sorensen, one of the Danish contingent, of which there are three. So we've got three Danes, uh, at least two Norwegians. So and uh, three Romanians. It's a very multinational series. This. The Maltese American, drivers, uh, a few Brits. An American. Just one. Nice have Just the one on its own, but he's uh, flying the flag quite well for the States. That's it. And and he's, he's, doing it. he's doing a great job. 
As we see the battle here for first, side by side, coming around the, the last corner for the start finish so into turn one. Uh, obviously, Penn just backing off a little bit, not trying not to go too wide into that first corner. And maybe he is just biding his time at the moment here, Andrew, and uh, letting uh, Monavan do all the work for him and just following on behind. But he just needs to be aware of Chris Beats behind him, um, who, who can obviously uh, take advantage of having the double slipstream, really, as we watch the like here for 12. Dominic Engel trying to get past Kittleman as they get past some lap traffic, but oh, and Meisner trying to take advantage as um, as they were sort of squabbling a little through the left hander. There's almost an opening on the inside for Meisner and for Sorensen. This is Camilleri and Sutianu then side by side as they continue this battle. And that's the two BMWs. It goes a bit wide, but it's not a problem there, really. Just behind, it's Camilleri. Can he risk it on the brakes into the inside on the right-hander? Sitiano covers the inside, covers the middle of the circuit, really, and uh, making it too risky for Camilleri to, to try anything or put his car at risk. You've got the Lamborghini of Watkins behind, and then you've got... Um, John Derrick. You can see John Derrick just behind them here, Andrew, and it's going to be fun when he gets there. I think he can do some damage. Yeah, I mean, if he if he can get on the back of this, I mean, at least side by side. Um, oh, not going to miss it this time. <laughs> Going over the over the charity stripe, then charity stripe, just the stripe. That's basketball. That's the wrong phrase. Never mind. <laughs> no charity out here in. Uh, in certainly either. not. That's certainly sure. not. Certainly not. But Charity no, strike the free throw line. What am I on about? Goodness me. <laughs> Never mind. We are we are in we are in Florida, but the uh, I have I obviously haven't brought my commentary talents down to South Beach like LeBron James uh, did. <laughs> Moldovan has <laughs> lead the way. Uh, well, but if, uh, when it does look like. If he, passed him, if he had passed him there, that would have been a, a free shot line um, pass, I think. That's it. You're <laughs> nearly That's there. You're nearly saved if uh, Penn actually got past my body. The only thing I've done is make a bald up of that analogy, wasn't it, really? But <laughs> never mind. Um, Penn, though, in all seriousness, is pushing hard. He looks like he's trying to get through because he, he wants to... S I think if I were him and I were in this strong position, it might be worth seeing if I can get through and potentially make a gap because because why not? I mean, exactly. if, if it doesn't work, if he overtakes you again, you've still got 10 minutes left. Yeah, it's a great shot there. The... A lot of the inside, aren't they? Maybe when you mentioned that yeah. tarmac area, sorry. Mm. Um, but he even went onto the grass, even past that bit. Yeah, there was that inside one where he went down, where you saw that tarmac there. A perfect illustration there from our. My excellent production go. manager, there. as uh, you can see that in there, as he's kept that overspeed. So this is what Beats. I'm talking about on that last lap. And Beats, Beats right is going to try and sneak on. through. If, if Penn, if Penn doesn't get this move done, Beats is going to get him. I'm sure. Yep, yeah, he will do. He's going to at least be side by side, and this could allow Moldovan to escape. If these two get embroiled in a scrap, we'll see. Beats is on the outside though, and it's very difficult to overtake round the outside here. I just wanted to see if he was just going to make a complete mockery out of me there, Chris Peets, by <laughs> driving all the way around the outside of Leon Penn, but not this time. Um, but I tell you what, now Leon Penn is going to be even more circumspect, isn't he, Andrew? Because he's not going to want to risk dropping down into third because no matter what happens in the last lap, it's, yes, you're going to get a good overspeed. We saw Chris Peets do it, but you're probably not going to get enough to get two cars down to the line. No, and uh, if you look at just behind as well, Sven Newman is now only 1.3 seconds behind, so he's closed that gap with the battling between 1, 2 and 3, and certainly the first two. So it's, it's bringing Sven Newman and uh, Palic into, into the fray. So I think soon, going into the last 10 minutes of this race, we're going to have a five-car battle for the top position, and uh, it's going to be a very tasty last 10 minutes of this race. Don Derrick's got past Watkins. So he's up into 17th place. He's in the middle of that pack that we mentioned. We'll keep an eye on him. But Moldovan, there is Derek. 
Mulder to, Van Lock. Uh, to 11th place there, I think, uh, with the timings and his speed at the moment, Andrew. You know, he's, oh, he's yeah. quick and they're all really close. I think all the way up to 11th place could possibly get, but here's Lock a big batch as, uh, as we got Penn again trying to take uh, Mulder Van Lock. Beats as well. I thought Beats was going to get one. I thought it's he was going to make it three wide then for a second. Yeah. Mulder Van hard on the goal. brakes. And I tell you what, he had a bit of a jerky brake motion there. He kind of, the car just kind of straightened, didn't it? But managed to keep it under control. Yeah, definitely. But he's got a really good defensive he's side by line side with him. That he's, he's got a better exit as Penn. Penn's alongside Moldovan. We're looking at Sorensen and Engel. But I think Penn's going to take the lead. Oh. He was very close. He backed out of it. I think they were side by side. I'm not sure. Could we? I wonder if we could get a replay, Dennis, of that. Just the last 30 seconds or so, because I, I wonder if they were side by side. The time gap was very, very small. Take us through it, Andrew. Yeah, it's coming around the last bend. So we're getting that. You see that big overspeed coming on, as, as we've been talking about. We, you see beats behind, like right on the tail. You probably had to back out a little bit there, going around into the first corner. Um, so I'm sorry, but I think uh, Moldovan's got a really good line into that first corner. He takes it really tight in, which makes it very hard for other cars to pass him around the outside. But, you know, really good battle in here with the top three. But, you know, this is playing into Sven Newman's hands because he's only one second off the lead now and he'll have that slipstream on Beats uh, and will start to pull himself up to this uh, battle of three as we see Beats here just he taking his nose out on uh, Penn just to say don't you don't don't you forget about me mate I'm uh, I'm still here and uh, I'm going to take you where I can and getting that he's slipstream get the off Alderman well. <laughs> oh, and the side draft and he gets some side draft here and he's going to is he oh. going to side draft past the pair of them it would be sensational if he makes this work, but I wonder, is it too wide? Is he going to leave himself too much to do? Although, oh no, you, oh. it's dirty out there though, isn't it? You can, all the marbles get deposited on the outside. Got that of inside line there, Bandy. He's got that inside line for the international Indeed. horseshoe, as he called it. Oh. Get to him, there you go. Is it a lucky horseshoe for him? Well, in this case it is, because he's just ahead of um, Leon Penn, so... Penn will be pensive at the moment because it, you know it, it's not the ideal spot for him to be in. It's not a bad one, as we've seen with Chris Beats. It's not a bad place to be, but but now, unfortunately <laughs> for him, you've got Sven, you've got Mike. They're just behind. That is Neumann and Palak, and they are lurking, and, and they they will be. I reckon they'll be getting stuck in quite quickly if they can, Andrew, because they've waited a while to be back on the back of this pack. Yeah, definitely. You know, we've got seven and a half minutes left of this race, so about another five, six laps to go. So they need to start making their moves, getting up behind. As we see a little bit of a gap, but obviously it closes up into the bus stop. Um, so these are going to be slipstreaming all the way down the second. So I think we're going to see some movement, two by two car action into, into the first corner, I think, on this lap here, Andrew. This is where they have to jockey for position. I know we were joking about horseshoes before, but you know, you've got to, um, these are the final furlongs. You've got to get into position. You've got to have something left in the tank. We see Newman right on the back of Penny, right underneath his wing. I wonder if he's going to pull out or, or just try and get that line into the first corner to get the inside line for the horseshoe. I mean, that's, that's as he, as he backs out a little bit from it, trying to get that slingshot round. So, he, he's, I think he's just biding yeah. his time, I think, at the moment, as we see Taboni in seventh place fighting with uh, Reimer. So, Taboni gets past Reimer up 13 places. So, he's had an outstanding race, started back in 20th on the grid, currently up to seventh as we watch Dominic Engel, the battle between Engel and uh, Sorensen. Uh, it's heating up all over the track, really, uh, and we got lots of little battles going out there. And uh, Derek, again, he's got up to 15th place. Always, though, as I would just say that, he moves down to 16th. So just got overtaken and takes it back again. So <laughs> Derek's the man on the move. Uh, he's got five seconds to get to the battle between Engel, Soros and Meister. So with his speed, I wouldn't put it past him. Oh, oh as we see Cristiano. And that's the same corner again. And I think there might have been some contact that time. But I'm, I'm uh, not sure. Um, but yeah, Derek, and that's him going backwards into the fence. Let's see 
what's happened. Does he clip the rear of the other BMW? Oh, he gets too deep on the brakes. And again, that. same corner though, mate. He, get, he got too deep on the brakes. He outbroke himself. And the only place he could go, um, apart from the back of the other BMW, was the grass. Um, yeah, Beat no, is closing in again. Reimer and Tabone are fighting tooth and nail for seventh. We, we've seen some great battles out there on the circuit. This is what the um, Apex Racing TV, Apex Racing League GT Trophy is all about. And uh, Beat going round the outside then on the start, finish straight over the tri-oval. How late can he break? Oh, he slightly loses the rear. He's got to correct it. He almost lost it on the way in. And that means that Moldovan keeps the place. But Newman is close to Penn as well. Ooh. As they're jockeying and he's late on the brakes. He's beats. He knows he's got to be late because he can't. Oh, he's, he's vulnerable now to, to Leon Penn. Yeah, he's going to have the, uh, the not optimal line coming into this corner, taking it deep, so he, he would be losing some speed to Penn, but uh, Penn needs pen. to unpen himself as uh, just to take one out of your book there, Andy. <laughs> yeah, he does indeed. He needs to pen a successful ending to this story, I think. Can he do it? I'm not sure. It's going to be very close. Um, Newman started in fourth. He's four fifty-six minutes later. But it's been quite eventful for him. Moldovan has led the majority of the race very, very well indeed, I might add. But it's not over for him. He hasn't completed the job. Chris Beats, the American, he's in there. This could be a move, though. Leon Penn. Oh, it's going to be brave if you want to try and get that done into the bus stop. It is not easy. And um, you risk making a right mess of the car and the race. But look at that right exit. in the gearbox of the Lamborghini almost. We're seeing... The diffuser, we're seeing almost seeing the workings of it as Penn tries to use the side draft and don't forget a bit of gravity from the top from higher up the hill. It does help on the exit that the banking does push you down at a greater speed. And this could be very, very interesting indeed as the course in racing cars now trying to work together side by side into turn one. Andrew, they're, they're, they're almost banging wheels, but beats maintains p2 it's that bit of bump draft in there between the teammates just to try and give them that extra bit of speed but beats but you know what is uh what's impressive is watching uh Moldovan going into that first corner you know the defensive line he's taking he's taking it the same line every single lap uh, and, and it's worked for him because the the rest of the cars can't take him round or, or get that inside line for the first corner so it's making all the other drivers go around the outside as we see uh, Watkins uh, getting past Calamari there for 50 no sorry it was Calamari getting past Watkins for 15th place there so yeah battles for out but that was a, a great defensive and watch him on this next lap watch him at the entry into that turn one and how he locks the door for the rest of the drivers so they're going to have to try and take him somewhere else on the track because I don't think that they'll be able to get him round turn one. Yeah, hopefully we can, uh, hopefully we're going to stick with the lead battle now to the end. There's only going to be a two minutes until the white flag comes out, so we'll see what happens between Bogdan Moldovan, Chris Beats, Leon Penn, Sven Newman, Mike Pallard. These are the five. This is where the race is going to be decided. Of course, unless they all end up in a big heap and uh, Winkler wins, but the, the odds on that are quite low at the moment. Here we go. Great over speed there. What a shot this oh, is. We're right in the middle there. of the action. Is he going to try? Oh, below the Ooh. yellow line, it's kind of frowned upon here at Daytona, but I'm not sure it is for the GT races. Um, Andrew, I know you've said you race this race. What's what's the view on that? Is it a, it, it's I, I think it below goes. the yellow line an issue still? Uh, it's not in iRacing. It wouldn't. It wouldn't give you a penalty. So you know, in the words of iRacing rules, you can go below that yellow line to try and do it. And I've seen some uh, races where they've actually the won it. So, so yeah, this is uh, certainly hot enough now. It's it's got one minute left of the Russell. This is this is going to be the final lap, I believe. 
uh, of the race. So it's all to go for on this lap with five cars still in the running uh, and a motor van uh, out the front at the moment. But he's not going to have that effect of the slipstream coming down this back part of the circuit. So expect to see uh, the other cars trying to get past him as we see Penn right on his uh, wing at the moment. And that's where he needs to be to get oh. a really good exit and really bad exit. And Penn takes the lead going into first oh, wow. place, going around that corner. Great pass. Unfortunately, uh, Moldovan took a really poor exit into that corner. Manages just took back into second place at the moment, but all happening on this last couple of corners here as Moldovan comes back on Penn coming Super into the bus stop. This is a brave move coming into the bus stop. We'll see if it pays off or if it can. And uh, I think Penn obviously tucks in behind Paul Lovian. But wow, what a great end to this race at the moment we're seeing, Andrew. If this race was a cup of cappuccino, this would now be the point where the froth is gone. We're well and truly at the end of the day here at the Daytona International Speedway. Bogdan Moldovan ahead of Leon Penn and Chris Beats, Sven Neumann and Mike Pallock. An hour has elapsed. And it's going to be to the line. Who's going to take it? We're going to get a three wide finish here. And it is Bogdan Moldovan after one hour who takes it by 15 one thousandths of a second. Chris Beats in third, Sven Neumann in fourth, Mike Pallock fifth. The top four covered by 0 0.069 of a second, Andrew. Wow, I mean, what a what a grandstand finish for the first round of the race, and you couldn't get a better round for that. You know, great racing there from Moldovan. You know, led it for a lot of the race, pitted a little bit earlier than the rest, and we we were a bit dubious if that would pay off, but it certainly did. Uh, unfortunately, Sven Newman, who uh, was very quick, unfortunately sort of missed out on the the pit stops. But you know, what a grandstand finish, having three cars wide into thingy. That'd be a great snap for the uh, photographers. Three cars wide, two behind. Amazing, amazing finish. Those five drivers driving round together, and rightly so, because they put on uh, absolutely wonderful exhibition here um, of GT3 racing. I'll tell you why I was a little hesitant of calling the finish, because you're never quite sure, are you, whether the chequered flag's going to come out, because it was only one hour and about 10, 15 seconds, and, you, and until you actually see the chequered flag on iRacing, they could have been another lap, couldn't they? And that's where they can't, and kind of all realised, oh, oh, God, we've got to go for it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You know, it's, that's that, the, the thing. They probably would have got the, the, the white flag and obviously, we, unfortunately, we didn't see uh, him out on that. But no, great ad for, for, for the race. And uh, obviously, if you guys want to get involved with any this series or with any of the other series on uh, Apex TV, just go across to apexracingleague.com uh, where you can sign up to leagues and we pretty much cover every single car that there is. So on Mondays, we've got the Formula V. Tuesday, we have this exciting race. So if you're a pro driver above 2.2 and you want to get into the action, then come along and sign up. Uh, Wednesdays will be Radicals that are, we're recruiting at the moment. Thursdays is the NASCAR Trucks. Uh, Friday is something really exciting, the Super Trucks round road racing. We had the first race last week and it was absolutely amazing. So I highly recommend going on that. And if you haven't seen it, watch the video back. On Saturdays, we got the F3, and then on Sundays, we got the GTE. So go across to apexracingleague.com and uh, see what tickles your fancy. There is always a league for everybody to enjoy. As we're going seven wide on the back straight for some kind of picture, is it? It's like the Mighty Ducks, like a flying V for those who are old enough to, uh, to have seen that film. One of my favourites. But uh, oh, Bogdan yeah. Moldovan took the win ahead of Leon Penn. And Chris Beats in third on the podium for Pacific Sim Motorsport. Sven Neumann for core. And Mike Pallock in fifth. So three core cars. Core Sim Racing one cars in the top five. And then Core Sim Racing two taking sixth with Carl Winkler. Luke Reimer was seventh ahead of Brandon Tabone. Hukan Grebstad in ninth. And then Richard Gefenku, a solid drive for tenth. Um... Kevin Kittleman made up 13 places from where he started to finish in 11th place. Uh, incidentally, the same as Tabone. He started 21st. Dominic Engel, 12th. Kasper Sorensen, 13th. John Derrick, 14th in the end. You know what? He might take that come the end of the championship because the points will be valuable indeed. Kurt Camilleri in 15th. Richard Watkins, 16th. 
Dennis Meisner finished in 17th ahead of Mihai uh, Sutianu, who had who probably would have finished 11th if he if he didn't um, spend quite a lot of the race throwing it at the scenery. Uh, Ronald Grossman in 19th, Matthias Beer 20th, Thomas Miner 21st, 22nd for Jan Philipp Janker, um, Florian Beer 23rd, Oystein Hereford in 24th. Kieran Smart, we saw him um, get stuck in the wall for a bit in 25th. Simon Brunstad, 26th. Alexander Scarrett was 27th. All, all those last three were a lap down. Callum Garton only managed six laps. And um, Gaetan Anger, Andrew, well, he had a bad start. And then um, he was absolutely mullered on the back straight, wasn't he? Yeah, on the first he, definitely, lap. he definitely was. So he's got it all to do. But uh, you've got some... Uh... Very good drivers waiting in the interview room, uh, Andrew. So I was wondering if you would, uh, if you would like, if you want to take one of them. Indeed, mate. Yeah, we've got um, and and there's only one man who we want to speak to first. We've got Bogdan Moldovan in in the commentary box. Bogdan, first of all, can you hear us? Yes. Well, that's great. We can hear you. And um, what an exciting race! How how was that last lap, especially? Um, for the for the nerves, I bet the heart was going. I was ready to crack down on the pressure because it was very tight, very close. I was thinking, uh, the guy behind what move should should I defend on the chicane? Should I not? Uh, stuff like this. Well, uh, in the end, it uh, was a happy result, a happy end for me. You know, you've got when you've got four cars covered by less than one tenth of a second. You know, it's it's one of those races that is quite common here at, at Daytona. Were you, did you practice anything like that at the end of the race? In you know, when you did your practice, did you, did you try and figure out how to approach a, a close finish, or did you just have to do it as you went? Well, I think I did it uh, more like uh, I. Uh as I went because I did not practice with multiple cars to see the draft only with my teammate, Mihai, I did practice, but uh, uh, that's what we do in qualifying where we both get uh, give each other the toe and make it uh, more uh, of the lap time that we could do without the toe, but uh, with four cars or more multiple cars now, I just, in the race, the slipstream was very powerful, so I was adapting my strategy as I was going. The BMW looked like it was pretty strong out there. How how is that car to drive? Um and you know, are you expecting the the car itself to be as strong in the next few races? Well I think the the uh best point of the BMW is straight line speed and also the stability when you are in a close fighting you can trust to throw the car and the car will grip of course you need the setup to do this so I work uh, with the team with the team we work a lot on the setup to make it okay in the race to be very safe so you can uh, trust the car when you defend or when you attack so yeah all right great well um just quickly, if you just stay with us a second. Andrew, where, where's the next race, mate? It's it's at Interlagos, so uh, completely different to this one. So Interlagos is the next round. So Bogdan, Interlagos, uh, Brazil, what do you think of that one? I think uh, it's going to be a mix, let's say, because I saw the Porsche has very good acceleration out of slow corners. So in Brazil, I can think of some corners where it could... Uh, uh, be better than BMW. Also, the mid-engine cars like uh, Lamborghini I saw was very good on rotation out of corners. So I don't know, but uh, also has some two straights is Interlagos where I think the BMW will be strong when to defend or maybe when I will uh, when it will attack. So we need to wait and see how the race unfolds there. Could be another race with a very, very close finish indeed. Thank you very much, Bogdan, for joining us. Um, before you go, if you'd like to give any um, any shout-outs or if you'd like to say hello to anybody in particular who's watching. Well, to my family and to my uh, team manager who helped me in this race to uh, keep, my, uh, keep the call in the race. So, yeah, that's it. Well... I, all that remains for me to say is congratulations. Good luck for next week. And um, I hope you can enjoy uh, a little bit of the bubbly. 
Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, Bogdan. Um, Bogdan Moldovan, the race winner. And um, Chris Beats is with Andrew Thompson. Hi, Chris. Uh, welcome to the commentary box. Can you hear me, mate? Sure can, Andrew. Well, I mean, for a round one advertisement, I don't think you can get better than that. The top three cars covered by thousands of a second coming over the line. How was that race for you and how were your nerves? Uh, that's one of the most exciting races I've done for a while, uh, for sure. Uh, nerves are frayed. I'm pretty sweaty. <laughs> Need a shower now. Yeah, so, I mean, we saw you a little bit, you know, just keeping it back between the front front two of Bogdan and uh, Leon out front battling it out. And you were, were you sort of biding your time? Because we saw you um, just keeping out of the, the way of them two. Were you expecting them to get into a little bit of contact? But then we saw your overspeed uh, and we, we, we were almost screaming on the commentary that you were going to get two places in one coming down that last corner going into the first corner. Um, what, what was your tactics trying to go into the, the latter half of that race? Uh, f for uh, the last couple laps, I was really just sitting back and kind of waiting for the white flag. And then uh, Sven kind of snuck up on us and kind of changed the whole game I had to push. Uh, I probably pushed a lap too early, but uh, to get a podium is a great result because I was looking for a top 10. So uh, I'm pretty happy now. Well, I mean, obviously, this is the first season where we haven't had the AMS on track. Does that make a big difference? Does it make um, a big difference when you're racing so you can just concentrate on the race and obviously realize that you may not get too many bat markers to pass? Does that does that change the, uh, the ethos of uh, racing? Yeah, it sure does, because a lot of times when we come up to the pits, we usually catch up with a couple of back markers, and that usually has a play on whatever strategy you might have, because... I mean, even the good back markers that get out of your way cost you half a second sometimes just because of the distraction. So without having that, is, uh, it, it does make you focus on the fuel, the tires, and the race itself. We saw, obviously, on your, your, your pit stops, you were one of the, the last to, to pit um, from the front-running group that we had. It was yourself, and I think it was Leon that was uh, the two that didn't, uh, that went a lap longer than Sven uh, uh, on on that was that always the way were you actually trying to save fuel at the start of the race uh yeah i, I it looked like it was just going to be kind of like a leapfrog game and i didn't want any of it and i wanted to survive so i just sat back save fuel and let the race come to me and it, it worked i jumped two places i think uh through the pit stop so it it worked out well yeah, certainly yourself, Leon, and Motivan certainly profited on the, the pit stop strategy because Sven Newman was about two seconds behind you. So obviously this race is a, this track is very much all about low downforce and the fast back half of the corner. So the next track we visit is is into Lagos. And I know the, uh, the Lamborghini quite well. So uh, I think it'd be quite good around that track. Are you, uh, what's, your, what's your feelings of that track? Uh, I'm excited. Um, I'm not the best at that track, but I've got a week to practice. Um, this track is one of those tracks where, well, at least Daytona is one of those tracks where you could be half a second off the pace, but still hang to the, guy, the car in front because of the draft. Um, going to Interlagos, it's not the case. Uh, there's not much of a draft, uh, at least uh, the, one, the one long straight that they do have. And you'll see the, the really quick guys, I think, show through next week. Yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, you've you put yourself in the best position to the start. Obviously, a, a podium on your first race out with the uh, GT Trophy. So before we let you go, mate, is there anybody you'd like to give a shout out to? Uh, for sure. Uh, Pacific Sim Motorsports. Um, we worked pretty hard on our setups and uh, it's come out pretty well. Um, and Mikel Rudebusch for making my, my livery. It looks great. Um, that's about it. Yeah, well, thanks for joining. We'll look forward to seeing you next week at Interlagos. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Andrew. Well, Andrew, I mean, welcome to uh, GT Trophy Racing. Um, how was your first experience? Oh, I, I mean, I absolutely loved it. Um, it's only my second proper race back in since last year. So, mate, coming back to a race like this it's, and um, working with you and Dennis has been a, a dream. So, um yeah, thanks very much for having me, and um, maybe I can do a few more if uh, if I get the free time. Who knows? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's it's an amazing series to join. And like I said, guys, if uh, you're watching and you've enjoyed the stream, then please do like on the stream uh, and uh, give us a subscribe, and you can uh, get notifications for all the many series that we do here on Apex Racing TV. Has uh, 
we've said before, head over to apexracingtea.com and you can see that. So I think that's it for tonight. Uh, so a big thank you to Andrew Woodhouse joining me in the commentary box. I don't think he's going to be here by next week, but it's always a pleasure to have you on, Andrew. <laughs> and uh, a big thanks to our production manager, Andrew De the Andrew Dennis Branch, who's uh, the honorary Andrew for tonight. So a big thank you for watching, guys. And we look forward to you to round two of the Apex Racing League Trophy, GT Trophy at Interlagos. So good night for night. Virtual Racing School was developed to provide support to the next generation of sim racers. No matter if you're a rookie or veteran or what car or track you'll be racing, our goal is to provide training every step of the way. We found that iRacing can be quite difficult without proper training. There needed to be a way to prepare for on-track racing. With VRS, you can literally learn from the best sim racers in the world, including four-time NASCAR iRacing world champion Ray Alfala. And Ray Alfala is a four-time champion of the NASCAR Beginner Freeze iRacing Series. Three-time iRacing Grand Prix world champion Martin Kronke. Martin Kronke becomes a three-time world champion. Rallycross world champion Mitchell De Jong. Mitchell De Jong is now champion for the iRacing Rallycross World Championship Series. And many other top sim racers. Data packs include everything you need to start learning. Our world championship coaches create the data packs by setting a hot lap or a series of fast laps for you to compare, analyze, and replicate. Data packs also include a tutorial where the coach points out techniques they use to hit the fast lap. This gives you access to the latest driving techniques and setups before you even hit the track. Sign up for a free account and download the VRS telemetry logger. With this application running seamlessly in the background, your laps automatically start syncing to the VRS website. From there, you can analyze and compare two laps of your choice, whether it's your data, the coaches, or your teammates. VRS will automatically target improvement opportunities so you can get up to speed even faster. VRS also makes it easy for you to request and schedule one-on-one -on -one or group coaching sessions. These sessions can range from 30 to 90 minutes and you can select the car, track and setup combination of your choice. Visit virtualracingschool.com today to sign up and get started.